Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh. The Together Again tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest Andrew Ripp. Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. Three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org. It's exciting that the business boutique was made for you. I know that I can make a difference in people's lives, and I want to do that. Hearing a lot of what other people are going through is really healing in a sense and motivating as well. I have the world in my hand, and I can do whatever I want. Learning from some of the top leaders who can make these dreams a reality is just so exciting. It ignited a passion in me to know she can do that, we can do that too. I'm so blessed to have heard the podcast that led me to this moment. Hey everyone, welcome to the Business Boutique Podcast. I'm Christy Wright, and today we're talking about diving into your dreams. I know from firsthand experience of creating my own businesses along the way, that business can be lonely. When it's just you, especially if you don't have any team members, and maybe your family's already gone to bed, and it's one of those late nights, you're up working on something that just seems like one of those endless projects you're never going to get done. I know you can feel very alone with your thoughts. And I know you can feel like that you are the only one out there struggling while everyone else seems to be winning in business effortlessly. It also seems like on those late nights that whenever you're kind of alone with your thoughts and struggling with a project or struggling with something you're working on, that a lot of times you are faced more than ever with all of your weaknesses, all of the things you don't know and all of the things that don't come naturally to you. But I just want to encourage you that you are not alone. I think some of the greatest things that happen in our lives start with an incredible story. And for me, it started when I was six months old. And I know you're probably thinking, how do you even remember what was going on when you were six months old? And I'll be honest, I don't. But I can tell you what was going on in my life at the time. And more importantly, what was going on in my mom's life at the time? My mom looked up one day when she was 33 years old in the dead of winter. And like many people, her life didn't turn out exactly how she planned. I was six months old when my parents split. And my mom looked up one day at 33, and she had a six-month-old baby to raise and support by herself. And it was at that point that she really went into survival mode. My mom's always been creative and persistent to a fault. And so she decided to do something creative and resourceful. She decided that she was going to start a business. And the way that she decided to do that was she went back to something she had always loved to do. When she was 16 years old, she had worked in a little bakery called Osmond's Bakery, baking and decorating cakes. And so she decided, I know how to do this. I'm going to turn this into a business. So she did something really brave. She went into a candy store in downtown Nashville in the cold of winter and asked to speak to the owner. They had a front showcase window that wasn't being used at the time. And so she had a great idea. She was going to use that space and offer to pay the owner 10% of her profits if he would let her rent out that little window. She convinced him and herself in the process that she could make this work. It would be a great idea to draw people into the store. Well, little did she know, it did draw people into the store. In fact, within just a few weeks, there was a line around the block, but it wasn't for the candy. It was for my mom's cakes. And now, 33 years later, mom is still in business. She's semi-retired. Of course, the business is a much smaller scale. She just bakes cakes for fun and to keep her skills sharp, as she says. But that story of my mom's cake shop That story of my mom's persevering spirit and business is the backdrop to my entire childhood. I have countless memories of that cake shop. I remember being a little girl and she would pull me out of bed at two and three and four in the morning and wrap me up in all of these comforters and put me in the car and strap me in and I'd go back to sleep in the car on the way to the cake shop. She had to go down there early so she could bake and what she would do is when we arrived at the cake shop, she would pull me out of the car and she would take me inside with all of my blankets bundled up around me. She had these pallets of powdered sugar and flour and she would take the comforters and make a bed for me and I would go back to sleep for the next few hours until it was time to go to school. I remember going to school with a smell of flour and sugar in my fine white blonde hair. I also remember whenever I was a middle schooler that I learned very quickly which button on the cash register opened the cash drawer. It was NS, and I had no idea what it meant, but I knew that if you push that button, the cash door opened. I would always grab a couple ones and head down to Subway and get a cookie down the street or head down to the arcade and play games. It is really no wonder that my mom's bookkeeper absolutely hated me. 
I also remember in high school, she would let me do deliveries on foot to all of the businesses around downtown. And as a bonus, I got to keep the tips, which was big money to me back then. My mom's business in the cake shop is the backdrop to my whole childhood. And what's so amazing is that that has shaped who I am today. Believe it or not, my mom's story, my mom's experience, and her amazing example, not only as a mother, but as a business owner, has shaped who I am and the woman that I have become. I was raised by a woman that is a fighter and a survivor, a woman that didn't apologize for her dreams or take the back seat in her own life. I was raised by a woman that raised a family and impacted her community and impacted the kingdom of God because she was brave enough to put one foot in front of the other in the direction of her dreams. That's why I am the woman I am today, but that's also why I want to equip you to do the same thing. For years, I've been coaching and working with women starting small businesses, and I never cease to be amazed at how powerful it can be when you see a woman step into her God-given gifts. There is a movement already happening in our world, in our culture, and all around us. You see it with the Pinterest generation, with the Etsy generation, and with social media. The barrier to entry into the marketplace is lower than ever before. If you have an idea, you can literally start a business tomorrow with nothing more than a Facebook page. Now, more than ever, women have the ability to create an income on their own terms. And the best part is, they're doing it from the flexibility of their own home, and they're creating businesses out of something that they love to do. And starting a business out of your home isn't just a theory I'm coaching women on. This is something I've actually experienced myself. I was 23 years old when I started my first side business. And like most of the women I coach, my idea came from something I had always loved to do. I had always loved horses. From the time that I can remember, I loved farms and riding horses. My aunt had animals, and I thought she was so cool. I just wanted to create a life just like her. And whenever I would visit my dad's house, he had horses, and I loved to ride them in the pasture whenever I had the opportunity to. It had always been a dream of mine to live on a farm, but I never thought I could actually do that until I was much older and had the money to afford land. But one day when I was 23, I saw an ad in the paper for a 40-acre farm for rent, and it was then that I took a leap of faith. I had no idea how I was going to afford the rent since it was three times what I was paying at the time, but I knew that I wanted to make it happen. And when I walked onto the property and my eyes spotted an 11 stall barn, I knew that I was going to be okay. I saw that barn as an opportunity to start a side business. I was going to start a business boarding horses and that money was going to help pay for my rent. That was when I started my first side business. And like so many women, it came out of something I had always loved. I had always loved horses. But my experience starting a side business is probably like a lot of yours. Now, maybe you weren't boarding horses because I know that's kind of weird, but you probably experienced what I did and that when you get into business, you get overwhelmed. And the solution, you just make it up as you go. I printed business cards and I put flyers out and I made up prices and I made up a name. I made it up as I went. I didn't have anyone to instruct me or guide me. I didn't have anyone to answer my questions. And there were no business books for how to start a side business from your home. To be honest, most people don't get into business because they love business. They get into it because they love their thing, and the business is just a way to share that with the world. I also know from coaching hundreds and hundreds of women in business that business is different for women. We all know that men and women are wired differently, so of course our approach to business is going to be different. We have a unique set of strengths and gifts and talents and challenges that we bring to the business world. And so that's why we are here to help you. That's why we have created a podcast just for you. I've done research on women with side businesses for several years, and we have created not only events, but also this podcast out of exactly what you told us that you needed. I understand how overwhelming business can be. All of that fun and energy you had when you started, all of the possibilities and hope of what this could do for you and all the exciting dreaming that you did of what your logo would look like and what your products were going to be or what services you would provide or where and how you would market this. All of that kind of fizzles out and you can hit a wall where overwhelm replaces all of that initial excitement. And instead of having hopes and dreams and excitement and creative brainstorming sessions, you've got nothing but questions. Again and again, I hear questions and concerns and doubts from women that are highly educated, highly talented, and highly motivated simply because the business side of things overwhelmed them. But you know what? I'll tell you this. Business is not that hard. 
It may seem overwhelming, but it's just simply because you're not sure what to do. And that is why I'm here to help you. That's why I have a plan for you to work through. I have answers to your questions. And the best part is I have story after story of people that are out there winning. We're going to have interviews on this podcast to inspire you, to show you that you can do the same thing. And they're not just going to be interviews of successful powerhouse entrepreneur women. I'm talking about interviews of women just like you, women that have overcome challenges, overcome their fears and all of their self-doubt, and they put one foot in front of the other in the direction of their dreams, and they go out and win in business anyway, even though they're scared, even though they feel unqualified, even though they say they're not business-minded they're still out there winning. Because the truth is, when you have the plan that you need and you have the answers to your questions, you can spend more time doing that thing that you love and that thing that God created you to do. That's why it's so important to have a way for you to stay motivated. I want you to listen to this podcast and maybe you even download it several times and revisit it to stay motivated because it's important to have someone walk with you step-by-step in your journey. Business can be hard. You'll hit roadblocks, Things will come up that you didn't see coming, where you feel like the rug has been pulled out from underneath your feet. And you know what? It can be discouraging. But if you have the answers you need and you have the inspiration to keep you going, it can be a lot easier to overcome that challenge. You know, it's really easy to set goals and it's really easy to have dreams. But to be honest, the gap between where you are today and where you want to be can be huge and it can be overwhelming. And even if you have the plan, sometimes you just need that extra encouragement. I want you to listen to this podcast. I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to be inspired by the stories of the women that are out there winning in business. And most of all, I want you to know that you can do it too. What is so powerful about the Business Boutique community, whether you interact with us through the podcast, online in our community, at an event, or in some other way, is that you are surrounded by thousands of other women that are on the same journey you are. There is something so powerful about connecting with other people that have similar dreams and similar fears and similar challenges. You are not alone in business. And I know business can be personal. It can feel so vulnerable to put yourself out there. You feel like you're putting your heart and soul and blood, sweat, and tears on the line out there for people to judge and accept or reject. And it can be scary and it can be overwhelming. But the truth is you don't have to go it alone. The most successful people in business and in life surround themselves with people that lift them up and encourage them. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to commit to going on this journey, not just for yourself and by yourself, but with others. Those stories of inspiration and encouragement are what is going to fuel you when times get tough and whenever things get hard. Friends, I just want to remind you that God created you on purpose with a purpose. And I want you to know that the calling in your heart and the dream that keeps nagging on you, that was not an accident. It's not an afterthought to be pushed in the back of your life to just collect dust and you'll get to it later. God has a plan and a purpose for the dream that He gave you. And it is a plan and a purpose that the world desperately needs you to step into. If you agree to take this journey with me, if you commit to go on this wild ride of putting your heart and soul out there on the line in business, I promise you this. You'll not only completely change the course of where your life is headed, but you'll have a whole lot more fun getting there. Now, I don't want this podcast to be a one-way conversation. I want you to get involved. So to make sure that you get to participate, I'm going to give you action steps each episode to make sure you can actually implement some of the things you've learned. So for this episode, I have two action steps for you. Action step one is to subscribe to the podcast. Action step two is to tweet at Christy B. Wright with the hashtag Business Boutique. And I would love for you to ask any questions you have or share challenges, fears, and hurdles that you're struggling with in business. So get involved and give us your feedback. That's it for this week. Thanks for hanging out with me. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. And for more encouragement on how to make money doing what you love, visit businessboutique.com. Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh, the Together Again tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest Andrew Ripp, Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. Three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. 
Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org.